Welcome to the Kids Eat Right Google Hangout. We are excited to have you and help us celebrate Kids Eat Right Month. If you've been paying attention, we've had some great events throughout the month um, through Twitter, through uh, Facebook, through social media. We've been having some awesome events nationwide, and today is no exception. Um, we have some excellent panelists joining us to talk about how to get kids to eat right, because that's the whole focus of why we're here, is any way that we can get kids to eat right. So we hope you all have fun. Um, allow for us to make some mistakes, because that might happen. Um, we hope you learn from us, and we learn from you. And uh, we, we enjoy having you part of this community. So I'm going to start off with a, a brief introduction of our panelists and let them talk about more than, of themselves. So our first expert panelist that we have is Amanda Kiefer from the Organization of Produce for Kids. Go ahead, Amanda. Hi. Thanks for having me today. My name is Amanda Kiefer. I'm the Director of Marketing Communications at Produce for Kids. Produce for Kids is dedicated to helping parents understand the importance of healthy eating and giving them the tools to create that healthy atmosphere for their families. We've also raised over $5 million for children's charities um, through grocery store programs that we run in the produce departments of grocery stores across the U.S. Fantastic. Thank you. It's so glad, uh, I'm so glad to have you. Um, let's go next to the Alliance for Healthier Generation where we have Stephanie Joyce. Go ahead, Stephanie. Hi, I'm Stephanie Joyce. I'm a National Nutrition Advisor for the Alliance for a Healthier Generation. And our organization works to reduce the prevalence of childhood obesity and empower kids nationwide to make healthy lifestyle choices. I'm excited Excellent. to be here today. Thanks for having Excellent. me. That's, that's awesome. Um, our third expert panelist is from Fuel Up to Play 60 of Arizona and the Dairy Council. We have uh, Terry Verison, who is a master's and a registered dietitian. And uh, go ahead, Terry, introduce yourself. Hi there. I'm Terry Verison. I'm director of nutrition education for Dairy Council of Arizona. And Dairy Council uh, has the largest school wellness program in the nation. It's a collaboration between the Dairy Council and the National Football League. You've probably seen Play 60 on NFL football games. That's the NFL's youth activity program. Dairy Council partnered with the National Football League to create Fuel Up to Play 60. And Dairy Council has the Fuel Up portion. As I said, it's, it's the largest school pro wellness program in the nation in over 73,000 schools and close to 1,500 schools here in Arizona. Excellent. That's so awesome. It's such a great resource to have. We utilize Fuel Up to Play 60 a lot, and it's a great partnership. Last but not least is our expert panelist, Lauren Harris Pincus with uh, Nutrition Starring You. Lauren, go ahead and introduce yourself. Thanks, Wes. Hi, everybody. I'm Lauren Harris Pincus, and I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist and owner of NutritionStarringYou.com. I personally was an obese child, so I have a very strong motivation to help others uh, achieve their weight and health goals through my private practice, speaking engagements, social media, and volunteering through Kids Eat Right. Awesome. It's so great to have you. I was checking out your website earlier. It is a fantastic website, so oh, we're glad you. to have you. And I realized that I didn't introduce myself. My name is Wesley Delbridge. I'm a registered dietitian. I'm a new uh, recent Academy uh, media spokesperson, so that's been fun and interesting, and I'm having a blast doing that. I'm also the food nutrition director for the Chandler Unified School District Food Nutrition Department here in Arizona where we have about 45 schools and serve over 42,000 students. So it's definitely uh, our panel. It comes from many, many different backgrounds. And so hopefully you guys will learn some interesting information today. Let's go to the first question, which is, what are some ways to encourage healthy eating and get kids to try new foods? You know, we always hear about getting kids to try new foods and, and picky eaters and how do you get them excited about it. And Lauren, I'm going to start with you since you have your own company and you work with kids a lot. Um, what are some interesting and innovative ways you found to help kids uh, try new foods? I think you have to start with making it fun and you want to avoid the battle at the dinner table. The dinner table really isn't the place to try and make kids start you know, to, to get used to new foods. You want to bring them to the store with you. You want to pick a new fruit or vegetable that week and, and see if you can figure out a way to prepare it together and get them in the kitchen with you to make it so they have 
you know, a, a personal vested interest in it. And you really just want to try different ways to do it. You know, it takes many exposures to get children to really accept a new food. And if you try that same exposure the same way over and over again, it's, it's not really going to be successful if you take that same piece of plain steamed broccoli over and over again and put it on their plate to try and get them to eat it. So different ways to incorporate them, fruits and vegetables into different foods with flavors they already like, that's really the way to go. Great. Any other, but anybody else have anything to add? Yes, I have a thought on that. Um, I think that allowing your kids, um, as Lauren said, to be in the produce department and let them touch and feel and select their own fruit or vegetable, tell them, you know, what this helps them, you know, how, how it helps their body, what types of vitamins it has, and kind of relate that and let them take it home and make it their own or, you know, do that recipe with them is, you know, then take it to the dinner table and they're more likely to eat it when you start you know, start that from the beginning. Absolutely. Kids always want to know how it benefits them, right? Not just how to please mom and dad. And I'd also like to jump in there as well. Trying new foods, yes, at home is important. Taking kids to the grocery store is important. Getting them involved in cooking, having them help decide on recipes and help preparing foods, all of those are great things. But you know what? Don't leave out school because trying new foods can happen in schools as well. Many, many school nutrition departments do things like taste tests to try new schools. Fuel Up to Play 60 can support those taste tests by providing funding to help purchase different types of foods, do taste tests with, with the kids at the schools. The kids can vote on different new items that they might like, and then the schools might be able to incorporate them into their, their regular menuing. I totally agree with you, Terry. We've uh, used iPod Touches with our kids, and we download surveys onto those iPods, and they're able to select everything that they like or don't like, and then they that comes in digitally to us, and we can electronically see everything that is going into it, and then we don't have to go with all the, you know, handwriting. So thinking of new innovative ways, and, and the kids love the iPod Touches. It's just any new way to keep it fun, to keep it exciting, to incorporate technology. Now, on your point, talking about, a lot of you guys were talking about cooking together. Um, and we want our, our kids to have kitchen skills, you know, how to, you know, take a piece of produce or a piece of fruit and break it down and cook it and incorporate it into recipes. So how do we build those habits? And I'm going to go to you, Amanda, since you work with Produce for Kids. How do we build those habits of getting kids better in the kitchen with us? Well, um, I've, I've been allowing my oldest daughter, who is eight, to go on to our Produce for Kids website and browse the recipes, um, pick out her own recipe that she'd like to try. I've even started having her do her own grocery list. <laughs> wow. Which is helpful. And then take her to the grocery store with me where she's able to kind of pull those things together. Um, I have always struggled with math. Uh, and so I think that, wow, you know, also learning about nutrition, there's other opportunities in the kitchen with my daughter, you know, learning our math skills or, or um, kind of taking another look at those with the measurements and things like that. Um, so that's, you know, just really a great opportunity. And when kids are creating something and then it's put in front of them, they're really more likely to eat that because it's their own creation. And they, you know, as I said before, they kind of went through the process. And I think even just human nature, it's kind of hard to look at something you created and, and say it's not good. <laughs> right. They have that, that they have that buy-in, and that's an yeah. excellent point. Yeah. Stephanie, what have you seen as far as getting kids to um, build better kitchen habits? Um, one thing that I've seen a lot of success in is engaging students in school gardens. Um, I think when students can be involved in the planning process and actually planting, caring for the, their garden and harvesting the produce, it's a really great opportunity to engage the kids. Um, 
you know, throughout the, the cycle of getting it from, from your garden into the cafeteria or to the family table. Um, I worked in a school district and we had a great success with making a curried carrot soup with fourth grade students. And I think wow. the teachers might have been a little surprised when I brought knives into the classroom because I planned to teach uh, the students some knife skills. And mm -hmm. it was a great opportunity. We had a lot of success. The students were very good and took a lot of responsibility. Um, and they were so proud when we brought this curried carrot soup to the cafeteria for taste test that afternoon. So um, I think any way you can get the students involved and, um, you know, it might sound scary to, you know, let fourth graders, you know, get in the kitchen with knives, but I think it's really important to teach them about how to use that equipment responsibly to get them engaged. Right. Um, and another thing that I think is important to mention is that, um, you know, sometimes uh, children have to be exposed to these foods, if it's a new food, upwards of 20 times or more mm -hmm. um, before they'll accept a new food. So I think it's appropriate to let our children decide if they want to have a no thank you bite so maybe they agree to try one bite to be polite and to be exposed to the new food um, but it's okay to accept if you know maybe they're not ready to to enjoy that food right now but eventually at some point they may be more open and willing to incorporate it interesting I've never heard of a no thank you food before I've heard of courtesy bites uh, things like yeah, that but I like no idea. thank you food yeah. Lauren, making you know, going back to Stephanie's point when she was talking about introducing knives, when you've worked with parents with your company and kids, what's a good age to start incorporating what the, they would be consider, um, you know, knives or or heavy equipment? Looks like Lauren has kind of dropped off our Google Hangout, so we'll roll with that, and maybe let's go over to uh, back to. Um, uh, Amanda, so as far as introducing knives with produce, what do you think an appropriate age is? Um, I think that, you know, around that fourth grade age is probably good. We've had some positive um, experiences with several of the in-store um, cooking demos that we've done with the lettuce knives, the plastic knives that you can use to cut lettuce. So I think oh. there are some tools for the younger kids that where you can introduce those skills, you know, without going full full on with the with the real thing. <laughs> yeah. That's a great point. Yeah. yeah I, I, I sorry. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. Um, you know, vegetable peelers, that was a big thing that we had done in that particular classroom because that's um, a tool. We had a lot of adult supervision that were were working with us, but um, you know, also even like bananas and a plastic knife. I mean, that's a great way to get a, a child that's younger than a fourth grade age level. That's a safe and appropriate way to get them engaged with food preparation. That's a good point. It's a way to introduce the knife without really introducing the knife. Yes. Um, <laughs> so moving on, you know, a lot of times dealing with kids, we always talk about, you know, special events. So we have either fundraisers or birthday parties or vacations. Um, things that take us off our normal life events and I think what we have is you know what what's the fine line between is, is it okay to have a piece of birthday cake um, or is that did you already have something maybe the day before that was a dessert and, and walking that fine line one of the things that we found um, you know we call it sometimes foods and sometimes foods is and pe a lot of parents ask me what does that mean? In fact, with the Twitter chat earlier this week, they go, what is a sometimes food? And I said, really, it's up to you to determine, you know, based on your child, based on their behavior, what foods are sometimes foods and how often you have them. I think what's important is to talk about food as fuel. And that really works with kids, is that you're fueling your body. And that birthday piece of birthday cake may be great, and we're not going to talk about it negatively in any sort of way, but that piece of birthday cake is really not adding any fuel to our body. Um, and so we can talk about how it's okay to have it, but it's re there's really no benefit. And so I, we we see a lot with kids when they start feeling good about themselves and what they're putting in their body that you know they may lean towards staying away from those sometimes foods. Terry, what have you found in the schools with these special occasions and these birthday parties? Well, different school districts have different policies, and most of them at this point are getting away from celebrating. Uh, birthdays and celebrations by using food and there's a whole variety of other options. Birthdays can be celebrated for instance once a month in a classroom and it can be a whole variety of different things that could be done for that. It might be games, it might be something other than food, it might be physical activity. 
and Fuel Up to Play 60 can help with that by providing support materials and, and um, resources to help get kids active. I think another thing, <clears throat> excuse me, is um, when parents need to also be aware of what those school guidelines are because we want to make sure that if parents are sending things to the school that they do meet the nutrient guidelines that the schools have set up for themselves. And you know, Stephanie, can you talk a little bit more about what those new nutrition guidelines are for um, fundraisers and birthday parties and, and things in the classroom? Yeah, um, Smart Snacks in Schools are the new USDA guidelines that have been put in place for all foods that are sold in school. So it actually only impacts foods that are sold to students. Um, celebrations, um, foods being used as a reward are actually not included in, in these particular guidelines. Um, but the Smart Snacks in School does include fundraisers um, that occur during the school day. And, and that means from midnight until 30 minutes after the instructional school day ends. Um, so in terms of fundraisers, they have to meet, if they're going to occur during that time, they do have to meet the Smart Snacks in Schools guidelines unless they fall under an exemption which your state would put in place. Um, but we really try to discourage using foods as rewards, foods at fundraisers. I've heard of a lot of schools doing some really positive activities, whether it be for fundraisers or to celebrate a student's success by incorporating physical activity, whether it's doing a dance party, allowing for extra recess time, um, trying to do some things with Zumba. Um, there's a lot of fun activities that I think students can look forward to that avoid putting a connotation with you are getting reward with a food because you did something well. That's a great point, and that, that actually led us right into our next question, talking about alternatives to rewarding kids with food. Now, um, Amanda, is, I know that, that sometimes a lot of we get, you know, let's not use food, but produce kind of gets left out of that conversation where it could be a fundraiser. Produce could be involved in classroom birthday parties or, um, you know, special occasions. What are your, some of your ideas at Produce for Kids to help with these special occasions? Um, well, we work with produce companies across the U.S., so we're usually privy to new products that are coming out and a trend we've seen really over the past year and a half, and you'll continue to see coming into the market this upcoming year, are more um, products that are travel friendly that you could bring into the school, these prepackaged things, these grabbing go products, if you will, that are um, produce items and they're your, you know, more healthy items, but they are making it more convenient to take those things, you know, the apple dippers or things like that right. as a healthier alternative that you could take, you know, into the classroom. Um, as far as um, just talking about the rewarding for a minute, I know um, at home for us, and every kid is different, so I think that individually as a parent looking at rewards for your kids, it's important to understand what makes them tick. So I know my oldest daughter, well both my daughters, my time is really most important to them as because I'm very busy. So if I say, you know, your reward, you get to teach me a dance class or you get to give me, teach me a yoga lesson, that would be worth the world. Or my younger daughter, I'll say, I. I will build a pillow fort with you, you know, and those rewards to them would be way more, you know, they'd be much more happier than some you know, food item, I think. And that's a great point to talk great. about, you know, doing doing things at home. And Terry, I want to go into talk about more about exercise and fitness because um, that's a lot of what Fuel to Play 60 does. Now let's let's think about, you know, we, you know, we have schools that are doing physical activity and that type of thing. But what can parents do at home with their busy schedules um, and kids' busy schedules to encourage physical activity as a family, um, kind of as a bonding time, maybe at home? It's so important for parents to be role models related to not just healthy eating but physical activity as well. Make physical activity a family activity and then that can extend into the school day as well. So by making sure that you are doing things, even if it's something as simple as taking the dog for a walk. I loved the building a pillow fort. What a great, That's a idea. great idea. That sounds like so much fun. I wish I thought to do that with my kids when they were younger. That sounds like a great idea. 
but there's there's just a whole variety of ways and part of it is get the kids involved ask the kids what do they want to do what kind of activities do they like to do and one real important thing especially at schools is don't use activity as a punishment don't say okay so now you have to run laps because you did something or you didn't you know meet some type of guideline or whatever it might be you never want to use physical activity as a punishment the goal is to get kids excited about wanting to be physically active and that's one of the great benefits of fuel up to play 60 is it brings that star power of the NFL I mean when kids can have a football player or big red come into their classroom or into their school to do an assembly those kids are excited about being physically active they're excited about listening to that celebrity talk about why healthy eating and why physical activity is important and look where it got me kind of thing those are messages that really hit home with kids that's that's awesome and, and Stephanie what have you seen as far as at home that really motivates kids to want to come home and be you know in this world of technology and video games and um, computers what gets them active what gets what are, can parents do to, to motivate them um, at home well, I think it's really important for parents to serve as role models. We want to be positive when we're talking about making healthy lifestyle choices. Um, so Terry's point, I think it's really important to engage our youth and to get them involved. So if we're going to plan a family physical activity for the weekend, let's get the kids involved and see what, what type of ideas they would like to put out there. Um, one resource that the Alliance does offer is a Be Well book. And it actually has some really great ideas on how ways families can incorporate physical activity and healthy eating. And it's really important to, to consider that every family is different. You're going to need something that's individualized for what works for your family. Um, not There's no one-size-fits-all for incorporating um, what healthy aspects you'd like to in your household. So um, this Be Well book, you can visit it at bewellbook.org, uh, and it has some really great tips and resources on what will work for your family. That's awesome. Um, you know, one of the things that I've found is it, in, and going back to Amanda's point with the pillow fort, which I think is a fantastic idea, is that, you know, I, we, I live in Arizona, and some of you may live in some snowy areas or some different climates, but we always think about physical activity going outside, um, but sometimes we can't, you know, like right now when it's 115 degrees outside, none of the kids want to go out there, or if it's six feet of snow, it's really hard to incorporate that physical activity. So, Amanda, what do you think are some more, I, I really like, let's go with this pillow fort idea. <laughs> what, what, what are some more things that we can do maybe inside the house, um, because parents might feel like, you know, it's too hot or it's too cold outside or it's raining or something like that. Yeah, I, I think there's a there's a lot of creative things you can do, and and I would recommend asking the most imaginative of your group, which is most likely your kids. Um, my girls come up with some pretty exciting challenges. They're big competitors, um, so they like to get involved in the hula hoop contest, or or even just a a balloon we get from Publix that see how many times they can hit the balloon back and forth. Um, just you know, those little things that they can come up with. Anything that they can compete against me or compete against each other, they're they're all for it. I think we that's an excellent point. Go ahead, Stephanie. Um, I was just going to add that on the Alliance website, we actually have some great short videos that um, feature fitness celebrities um, that will walk you through either like a yoga session or Taibo. There's just a, a few short videos that are really easy to, to do at home inside. That's awesome. Now, Terry, everybody's pretty much headed back to school now. Um, so we're, we're, we're talking about making good choices away from home, whether that be in the packed lunch, um, in a lunch at, at school, or, you know, traveling and after school care, breakfast time, all these things away from home. So how can we incorporate food and fitness as, as all of our kids are headed back to school during this time? Well, first of all, I would encourage parents to check to see if their school has a breakfast program. It more than likely does, and if you need to have your kids eat breakfast at school, it's a great option. The breakfasts that are served at school meet the nutritional guidelines, so it's a great option to make sure your kids are fed and make sure that they're ready to start the day, their bodies are all fueled up to be able to start the day. 
So, and, and one of the gold standards actually is breakfast in the classroom. The schools that provide breakfast in the classroom make sure that everybody gets a healthy breakfast and kids aren't singled out and they don't have to go to the, the cafeteria to have the breakfast. Everybody gets the breakfast and they're all starting from a level playing field by fueling their body. That's an excellent point. Now, Amanda, how about some breakfast ideas? Let's say a parent really is excited about making breakfast at home for their child. Um, what are some breakfast ideas that they could incorporate to make it breakfast exciting? You know, we're usually crunched for time. You, you mentioned that you have girls. Um, so how can we get breakfast exciting for some, for some breakfast ideas at home? Well, we, as most families, are very busy in the mornings. So what we've been doing, both my girls love smoothies and there's so many varieties of smoothies and so many things you can incorporate into smoothies. We've been making smoothie packs that we we put together say on a Sunday and then we put into the freezer. So each morning they can pull out their smoothie pack which for instance could contain um, blueberries, strawberries, bananas, flaxseed, wow. spinach whatever you know whatever you want to include in there and then you you step over adding the ice because everything's frozen and you may just want to add you know a, a dap of uh, frozen yo or regular uh, vanilla yogurt or some milk or water or something along those lines um, so I feel like those are really great and then um, we've also developed some recipes uh, for our website that are more along the lines of the overnight oats um, or the, the burritos, but a healthier burrito that you could make with fruits and veggies that could be pre-made and then either frozen and heated to go or just put in the refrigerator, you know, and you can pull it out. My kids are often eating in the car. I'm ashamed to admit that. But um, so many of hey, our that's things... that's real life. <laughs> that's life. And many of our things have to be travel friendly. So, um, you know, and we understand that when we develop our recipes, we have, or I should say, I keep myself in mind um, when we give that direction and make sure that we're able to provide parents with those, um, you know, those solutions for their mornings. Stephanie, what are some resources that the Alliance has for uh, helping parents help their kids make good choices away from home? Yeah, I think we, um, if people want to come and visit our the healthier alliance for a healthier generation org we have a lot of great um, tips and tools and handouts that you can either review for your own knowledge or share with other parents perhaps a classroom teacher if you'd like to see healthier snacks in your classroom or you know with the start of the school year I think it's important to you know reach out to the teacher if you're you're on board for healthy eating let them know that you support them in that and ask if there's anything that you could do to help support it in the classroom I think it's important to um, you know, for families to, you know, make sure that they're always trying to get new recipes to keep healthy eating fun and engaging. And um, we offer some of those resources on our website. Um, so, yeah, I definitely recommend uh, trying to get some fresh ideas for the start of the school year. The start of the school year is a great time to begin new things. And um, kicking off it with Kids Eat Right uh, Healthy Eating Month is a great way to do it. I love that. That's a great way to promote kids eat right because it is important and it's important all year long and I, I found with the, our parents and with our students and you know working with at home or whether it be at school is to keep up that communication so ask your children what they ate that day ask them how active they were at school um, make choices at, at dinner where you have conversation tools whether it's I, I know of one parent that has a table topic so she puts a little bowl in the center of the table and they pull out questions about their day um, they talk about what they ate it could be as ridiculous as if you were to be any sort of dinosaur what dinosaur would you be and then that could lead into a conversation about what do dinosaurs eat and you just never know with kids but the the thing to keep in mind is to you know get around the table to make it fun make it social and and to kind of use that dinner time as like a check-in time um, to because it's it's really hard with breakfast you know we're rushed lunch we're not really around our children um, but dinners is that check-in time. So dinner doesn't always have to be, you know, fantastically healthy, but it could be a, a way and an opportunity to talk about what you had that day. You know, one of the parents I talked to says if, if their child says that they were cranky in the afternoon or, or in a bad mood, they revisit what they ate as a snack. 
um, so they use that as a learning opportunity. So I think that that's great. Well, it's uh, unfortunate that we lost Lauren, but that's okay. I really want to thank um, our panelists for being up here. We have uh, you know Stephanie with the Alliance for Healthier Generation, Amanda with Produce for Kids, Terry with Fuel to Play 60 in the Dairy Council. If you guys want to do um, some uh, website, quick website or Twitter handle promotions. Yes, the Alliance for a Healthier Generation org and the BeWellBook org. Okay, and how about you, Amanda? You can find all of our information at produceforkids.com, and we're also uh, currently running a back to school um, focused program at poweryourlunchbox.com. Great, and Terry. And fueluptoplay60.com is the Fuel Up to Play 60 website. And there's also great nutrition information, recipes, tips, all sorts of things at nationaldairycouncil.org as well. Well, great. I appreciate all of you joining us. I'm here to promote Kids Eat Right and Kids Eat Right Month. So I would encourage everyone out there to visit kidseatright.org. Uh, um, you can visit the eatright.org website backslash kids also. That's another way to get it. Follow them on Twitter. Um, it's, it's the nation's best resource for getting kids to eat right. So we hope that you learn from us. Um, we we want to hear ideas from you. So visit our websites, visit the handles, and visit kidseatright.org and, and comment and let us know what you want to talk about in the future um, and some other ideas that maybe you could contribute to getting kids to eat right. So let's keep this celebration up. Uh, continue the rest of the month, follow all of our events, and then uh, let's keep it going throughout the school year. So thank you to all my panelists, and thank you to everyone out there um, in the internet community. And so I'm going to go ahead and say goodbye for now, and we will talk to you soon. <laughs>